So no matter what type of flooring you're gonna be installing, you always wanna make sure you prep the surface. The material we're using, which is the Cortec Pro Series, it doesn't require any padding or under vapor barrier, especially since we're not installing on top of concrete. I'll be able to install it right on top of this wood floor. So my first step is prepping the floor by cleaning it and checking for any nails that are proud and making sure that they're pounded in. So what I'm doing is laying out that first row and I'm actually gonna lay out the first two rows and get it lined up with these posts right where they're gonna be so I can mark all the cutouts and make them all perfect. Now the reason I'm doing two rows instead of just one is that two rows will help straighten this whole thing out and keep it together as one unit. It's amazing how straight this becomes once you put it all together. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the face of this out here just to confirm good and square so that I can mark where this is gonna be. I can measure this, which is three inches. I'll go through and I'll mark out all these and then take them apart, cut them, and they should go back together pretty easily. Now what I've done is I've marked the location of these, then I'm cutting on the outside of that mark. So the goal is that I'm giving myself a gap around that post so that it can expand and contract a little bit. Um, this flooring has been in this building for about two weeks now, sitting up here. So it's acclimated to the current, um, I guess, atmosphere here or the climate of this building. All right, so now we start putting these back in where they belong and hope that everything is gonna work out just fine, which hopefully is the case. I've got just a slight gap here. I mean, not big, but uh, hopefully enough. I don't want it to be super big, uh, obviously for a aesthetic. But now I can start running these two rows back together. first couple rows are important. I mean, they're all important, but the first ones are definitely important because they're gonna set the tone for the entire floor. So we wanna make sure that 
everything is as good as possible. Now this is where it might be a little tricky. Maybe, maybe not. I really feel like I could do a better job on that one, and I'm gonna. I don't like it. Well, in my opinion, that's the hard part. Getting those first two rows around the railing posts. And now that I've got that done, I go ahead and start laying out rows, and it should straighten out even more as I go. But obviously, these first two are super crucial on getting it straight. So I took my time, made sure that it was straight, and the good thing is I had a nice laser line on these columns when I set them and a snap line. So I know those were all set straight. Really, once you get this thing laid out and you start going and you're a few rows in, it's really just you're going to town and there's not a whole lot of thinking involved, making sure that all of your pieces are, you know, snug and tight, not, you don't want any gaps because if you start developing gaps and you don't get them seated properly, then your floor can start getting a little wavy. So there's a couple different ways that I found you can do it. And I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way. I don't know. I get this side tight flex this up just a little bit and then I get the long channel in see how it's snapped in way over on this end and it needs to go in right here and I can just take a little beater block tap it in and then you know that it is in when it drops flat you'll see now that it's flat if it's sitting sitting up like this then you aren't in all the way and it never hurts just to go ahead and put a couple soft taps just to make sure it's all the way in. So like I said, you can either put it in this way or once you've got a lot of your row established, you can put it in long ways, making sure that it's as close this way as possible. Get it almost all the way in and kind of flex it so that it just barely misses this. Now you're engaged on the long one, but you need to get this in and you can just take your board, make sure you kind of keep that down. Give it a couple taps and you'll feel it engage. You can't really do this method if you're just starting out a row because what you can do is push the whole row. But once you get a bunch of pieces in, you're not gonna push it. So there you go. Now, when you're at the end and you've got to cut a piece, you can do it a couple different ways. You can use a saw, make sawdust, and um, maybe you don't have one. Well, you can go out and get one of these tools, which are fairly cheap. You can pick them up for under 100 bucks, and uh, you can probably rent them actually at some do-it-best stores. But what's nice is it, it creates no sawdust. So I've got my mark here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it in till this, uh, basically it's a big shear, it's a big guillotine. And this stuff is so easy, you can just apply pressure and boom. So very easy cutting. And now this piece, I'll go ahead and start the row with this piece because it's over eight inches and this is my finisher. Now, when I get to the end here, I definitely want to make sure I engage it on the long ways. And the reason being, it's a lot easier 
to push in a piece than it is to get a piece from the end in. They make some special tools that allow you to grab the end and hit. They're like a double angle Z bar. I don't have one on me, so we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna engage the end, make sure we like it. Kind of flex it up a little bit, push in. And then I'll grab my board. Boom, and it drops right in. Another good thing I like to do is open up a couple boxes, lay them all out, get them kind of where you want them, and that way you can look at the pattern and see if it's like, oh man, there's a bunch of the exact same right next to each other, because obviously this is a man-made product. It's, a, it's basically a repetitious pattern, but they stagger it across the pieces, so it's not like every piece has a exact patterned piece, but the pattern that's on the piece could be the same somewhere in another piece. So, you know, you don't really want all of the same look in the exact same area. Sometimes it's unavoidable, sometimes it's gonna happen, but uh, obviously if you can avoid it, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time and you gotta lay all the pieces out eventually anyway. So it's just a little, it's just something that I like to do. You know, believe it or not, another thing is uh, back, Back when we designed this floor system, I mean, I knew we were gonna be using a laminate floor and inherently laminate floors can look really bad if not done well. And what I mean is not only the installation of the, the, the product, but the subfloor underneath of it. And honestly, that is why I really wanted to overdo this big area, this big 1200 square foot room up here because I knew that you were gonna have all this sunlight coming in these windows pouring across this floor. And the last thing I wanted to see was an uneven or wavy floor. And by using iJoyce Legacy Inch and an Eighth subfloor, it should take out all of that and make it nice and flat. So I'm really excited to see the sun come across this floor. Also, when you're hitting these in, it helps tremendously if you keep them on an angle, a slight angle as you hit them in. So don't flex it down, keep it on an angle. And what I mean by that is don't push it down and hit it. Try to keep it up. It will go in a lot easier. Also, I know I should probably be using a rubber mallet. I'm gonna try to bring that tomorrow so that I can do less. And I don't even know if I'm doing any damage, but just to make it a little bit easier. As you go, you definitely want to be vacuuming this all up. Perfect.
I need to put my knee pads on. Where are them at? Yeah, honestly, Cole, just start laying them, like lay out like four whole rows and then we'll look at it and if we need to move something, we'll move it. If you want knee pads, there they are, man, if you get on your knees. Hey, what's up, guys? New day here and you'll see I've replaced Greg. I've got Cole, my son, here today. Greg just wasn't cutting it. I, uh, I was getting tired of how lazy he was. What, what's that? Oh, the, the background noise, who is that? I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you hear anything, Cole? No. I don't hear anything. It's definitely not Greg working downstairs by himself. See, me and Cole just got done installing a bunch of laminate floor at our house. And Cole's basically a professional now, so I figured I'd bring him to the job site and uh, let him make some money. Wait, am I paying you? Yes. Am I? Yep. Oh. All right, now somebody said I can score with this my knife, score this with my knife. That's pretty legendary, dude. I don't have to go to a cutter? Wait, did you take my little piece already over there? Yes. Wait, did you flip this one around for me already to mark it? You should have said yes. Oh. And I would have been like, dang, dude. I've taught you something. Then I would have done it again, and you're like, what are you doing, Cole? Like, Look at this. You have got to be kidding me. I was cutting these on that shear all day yesterday. Now you see my stagger? So you start getting pieces lined up. I think the biggest thing, Cole, is if I never have to really wait for a piece, there's always pieces in front of me, that's really all I care about. Because that'll be the, that'll be the most efficient way to stay moving fast. I'm out of pieces, dude. I'm out of pieces up here. I, I want to I want to go in a stagger though, dude. That's that's how I'd be more efficient. And these pieces are upside down. It's all right. You'll figure it out. Now, I did not know I could do this, but once I get my mark for where I want my cut to be, I can just score this luxury plank flooring. Boom! Nice clean snap. No need to go back and forth to the saw. It's pretty, pretty crazy. That piece can go down, Cole, if you're going down that way. Yes, I am. If you are. I'm making sure they're all right this one. Nice. I don't expect you to know what you're doing, but what I always say is anybody can do is learn. And if you can't learn and you keep making the exact same mistake, then I wouldn't want you to come to the job site. But if you're willing to keep, keep learning and doing better, then that's really... It's really all that I would ever ask. See, the real reason I had you come today, Cole, was that if anybody complains about the pattern, I'll be like, yeah, sorry. So my 13-year-old son came to work for me today, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't really pay attention to what he was doing. I just... Now, the nice thing about this product, though, is you could very easily pull it all up and redo it. I wouldn't want to have to, but... Ugh. I wish I would have brought my rubber mallet. That was the thing I wanted to bring. I just, it's already 9.30. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. If I didn't have knee pads, I would be dead today. So this brings me to 
Another tip when laying out flooring or when installing this sort of product, get yourself a good helper because having the product laid out in front of you will vastly speed up the time it takes to do the install. If you're not having to go back and forth, get materials, one guy can focus on the install and one guy can focus on the layout. But obviously if you don't have anybody to help, this is totally possible to be a one man job. Oh dude, you're, you're amazing. This is really helpful. I wouldn't take you out of school to help me if I didn't think it was worth it. And I think school's great, but I think that there's always things to learn outside of school that you can miss out on if, well, life is where you learn most of your lessons. School is great for background knowledge and it's important. It's important for socialization, figuring out who you are as a person. You're never gonna learn many life skills in a classroom, unfortunately. People, a lot of people say, well, see, it's not, it's not worth going to school. I don't learn nothing. No, 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 no. You learn something. You learn stuff, you don't learn everything. but how you apply it in life comes through lessons you learn doing actual life. But that background knowledge is like right now, you in school, you learn how to solve math equations, right? How to get the answer. In real world, you're figuring out how do I randomize this pattern and be efficient? How do I stay ahead of my dad? Like those are different skills, but without the skills of problem solving, you might have a harder time figuring it out. There's also something to be said for doing the work yourself. You gain a more appreciation for what, what it really is because you know what went into making it. You know what's really too bad, Cole, is like the days of like Friday, we used to go to like Angelo's buffet and like, it's like, yeah, Friday, let's go. And those days are kind of gone. No, just, just because of the coronavirus, like I would still go. Work will, work will literally always be there. Wait. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I'll trust your judgment, Dave. I mean, I'm still gonna blame you if, if somebody doesn't like the layout though. <laughs> what we'll do, Cole, is we'll open up all those boxes no, I think we leave, leave them back there because it's easier, I think, to move it forward well, than to come from back here. Yep. I these ones. No, 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 don't move them back here. Cause then you gotta like work back over. Just push them that way, open them, and then you got them all right in front of you. It doesn't make sense to bring them all the way over here and then bring them all the way back. See what I'm saying? Nah. sure feels good to keep knocking off these tasks. I feel like whenever you get into a project that is this long and drawn out because it's just a ton of work for two guys, uh, it just feels really good when you knock out a big project. And obviously this flooring is not difficult. It's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. It's a big square. We didn't really have a whole lot to go around once we did the newel columns for the railing. 
Uh, and then it was just basically run and gun and it doesn't matter, it still feels good. I love it because it looks great. When you walk around up here, it feels amazing, it sounds amazing. Uh, and that all goes back to using the right products for the entire floor system so that at this point, you know, we can feel really good about it. I've still got to run around the base with a, a little piece of filler at the bottom of that wall. And then this is ready to be trimmed out up here. So awesome feeling. And another thing that we can check off the list, when we come back here, we're gonna probably get going on hanging doors, starting to trim things out. And eventually we're gonna get to that fireplace so we can hang all that Versetta stone on it and get really close to whipping this thing out. And then I will be taking you guys through a nice long walkthrough to show you guys the entire thing in a completed state. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, because there's still a lot to come. So thanks a lot and we'll catch you in the next one.